learning a language fast. That's the holy grail of language learning. And most people on YouTube make it look very easy. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to learn any language in six to 12 months. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I taught myself Mandarin Chinese in six months. As you could probably see from the title, I set out to see how efficiently I could learn Italian in seven days. The thing is, most YouTubers and most people learning languages actually use different techniques for becoming fluent. So what works? In this video, I'm going to show you what really works using advice from scientists and my own experience as well. I'm going to combine all of this advice into a one-year program that you can use to learn any language. In fact, this information that I'm about to share with you, that's the information that I use to actually become fluent and learn multiple languages to pretty high level. So that's the techniques I use to learn English and to learn Japanese. So my first language is actually French. So specifically, I'm going to give you information on the three pillars of language learning so you can actually apply them. So the three pillars are pronunciation and then grammar and then vocabulary. Before showing you how to become fluent in one year, I need to define what we mean by fluent. Instead of having a debate on what is meant by fluent, let's just accept that there are actually different levels of fluency. I think that most people would consider themselves and other people fluent when they can perform certain activities, certain key activities in their target language without too many issues. Things like watching movies in that target language, reading and writing emails and text messages in that target language, and of course, having conversations with native speakers of that language. Well, we could include more complex activities, things like reading news articles, reading novels, writing academic essays, but honestly, I think that most people would call themselves fluent and they would be satisfied even if they can't actually perform those complex activities perfectly. For the sake of simplicity, I'm going to focus on one key activity that I think is actually an excellent proxy for overall fluency, and that is understanding a movie without subtitles. To help you understand why I think listening comprehension is an excellent proxy for uh, overall fluency, here's a clip from Steve Kaufman. I have met a lot of people who can speak and who seem to be able to speak the language and don't understand when you speak to them. I believe that listening should be that listening comprehension is the fundamental skill in language learning. That is what you should drive for first of all. If you develop good listening comprehension, the other skills will come. The speaking will come. Even your grammar, your accuracy, and all of these things will come if you have had so much exposure to the language that you understand it when it is spoken by a native speaker. So in this video, I'm going to assume that fluency equals understanding a movie in your target language. Now, this is not exactly true, but my own experience is that those two are highly correlated. So now if fluency equals understanding a movie, what does it take to actually understand a movie in a foreign language? In his book, How to Learn a Foreign Language, Dr. Paul Pimsler actually divides his advice into three sections. And those are the three pillars I have described earlier. So pronunciation, grammar, and vocabulary. He also describes the work, the amount of work that is required to actually master those three pillars. So for pronunciation, you're going to need to learn uh, anywhere in between 15 to 60 sounds. And usually when you're learning a language, there's going to be about half a dozen sounds which are going to be hard for you to imitate because they're not going to be present in your native language. Now, it really depends on the language because uh, you know languages like Hawaiian have very, very few sounds, like uh, 15 different sounds, I think. And there are languages, I think, close to Russia, they have up to 60 sounds. But usually if you're learning you know, pretty uh, standard languages like French and Spanish, this is going to be about 30 or 32 sounds. Now for the second pillar for grammar, everything that you need to know can actually be condensed in a one year college course or let's say two years of high school. So that is a lot of information, but it's pretty limited in scope. For vocabulary, Dr. Paul Pimsler actually recommends knowing about 5,000 words if you want to 
be fluent. But according to Dr. Paul Nation, you need to know about 6,000 words if you want to be able to actually understand a movie. That's the ideal number, number of words. Of course, if you know more, then it's going to be even better. But for the sake of this video, I think that 6,000 words is actually a pretty good benchmark. That's where I think I feel that most people are going to be very comfortable understanding a movie in a foreign language. And to be clear, I'm talking about the six thousand most common words in that language. So as you can see, learning pronunciation, grammar, and vocabulary is actually a huge task. It can be pretty tedious and there's a lot of work. So I've actually created a tool called Fluent Falcon that uses audio drills in order to make you fluent. Fluent Falcon is how I learn languages. This is the tool I made. So if you want to check it out, go to fluentfalcon.com. I have included a link in the description. But okay, with that aside, let's dive into the first pillar of language learning and the easiest one, which is, believe it or not, pronunciation. So the biggest issue that most people have with pronunciation is that when saying a word, when saying a sentence, they actually picture the way that that word or sentence is written in their mind. So the problem with this is that when you picture the letters and stuff, automatically you're going to, to associate those letters with specific pronunciation patterns of your native language. So like English, for example. So when you imagine those letters, the pronunciation patterns of English are what's go going to come out of your mouth. The right way to go about this is to put this visual representation of the letters aside and try first to listen to the pronunciation of the different words and sentences of the language. Listen to the sounds and then gradually try to imitate those sounds. Something else I have noticed about pronunciation is that good pronunciation is something that can deteriorate pretty quickly. So if you don't practice, you know, using multiple repetitions spaced in time, your pronunciation of different words and phrases is going to get worse. So it's very important that you actually plan for, um, you know, getting some inspiration and really listening to a native speaker actually pronounce uh, different words and different sentences and do it repeatedly. Another piece of advice I have regarding pronunciation is that you should consider actually studying mostly with audio. I know this sounds a bit counterintuitive because most people are going to want to be at a desk and actually study with a textbook. I think that's the image that most people have when they think of studying. But using tools like uh, Pimsleur or you know, Fluent Falcon, you can actually you know, study pretty much 100% with audio. And there are two advantages here. Number one, this is extremely practical because you can do this on the go. And number two, because you're, co you're consuming so much audio, your pronunciation is going to get a lot better. Now, when it comes to pronunciation, you really need to be very meticulous every single sound is going to matter to native speakers of the language that you're trying to learn. They may actually misunderstand you just because of one mistake. So think about it. When you meet like English learners, they can often make mistakes that seem trivial to them. Things like eat and it, or beach and the other word, sheep and ship. To non-native English speakers, the difference between those words sound minimal, but to English speakers, those are completely different words. And so you're going to be misunderstood if you make a mistake with those words. Another thing I want to mention is don't try to work on your pronunciation with specific letters in isolation. So a good example of that would be the French R. So first of all, you know, trying to pronounce an R in French in isolation is just uh, stupid because it never happens. And secondly, you know, the French R is pronounced differently depending on the context and the words. So for example, Paris, rouge, which is Paris and red, Paris, rouge. So you know, there's an R in both of those words, but it's pronounced totally differently. So you should actually try to train your pronunciation using entire words and if possible, entire sentences. Now let's move on to grammar. Now the first thing I wanna mention is that you do not need to have perfect grammar to actually start speaking the language. As a matter of fact, insisting on having perfect grammar before starting to speak is the source of a lot of frustration. And a lot of people actually end up giving up the language just because of that frustration. 
I'm not saying that grammar doesn't matter, but it's something that you're going to perfect along the way. You don't need to get it 100% right from the start. Another thing I want to mention as well is that learning grammar doesn't necessarily involve you sitting at a desk actually reading a textbook. A lot of the grammar, as a matter of fact, most of the grammar that you're going to learn is going to be learned in a more organic way. So like reading and listening. And you know, typically grammar is the thing that most people fear and I would suggest by that by using a more intuitive approach to and a more organic approach to grammar learning, you're going to be able to get over this fear because your grammar knowledge is going to be so much more intuitive and so much more natural. Let me give you a very concrete example. Pierre Delattre actually performed an experiment with two groups of students. The first group was taught French using the traditional approach. So they learn, you know, grammar rules. That's what most of us do when we go to school. And the second group was taught French using audio recordings in French. And so Pierre Delattre actually reported that students who worked with recordings acquired grammatical habits with unexpected ease. They surmounted problems that looked very intricate in the light of linguistic analysis. And he also goes on to say, learning grammar from the rules is like learning the interpretation of a melody secondhand from the explanations of someone who has heard it sung. Learning it from direct speech, as with recordings, is like learning the interpretation of a melody directly from hearing it sung. It is the only way to get it fully and exactly. So in my opinion, there's actually a lot of value in uh, learning grammar in a very explicit way, you know, with the traditional approach, learning actual gra grammar rules. But most of the learning that you're going to do is going to be much more intuitive. This is stuff that, you know, by reading and listening to stuff, you're going to absorb the grammar automatically. And so this is going to become second nature. So in order to learn grammar organically using this intuitive approach, what I would recommend, and I'm going to talk about more details in the next section on vocabulary, you can use a flashcard system where you actually put sentences, you save sentences that represent those different grammatical points that you want to remember, and you learn those sentences and you review them over time. By studying those sentences over and over, you're drilling those grammatical points into your mind and you're automatically going to remember those grammatical points. This is going to become second nature. Now let's move on to the third pillar, which is vocabulary, which is by far the most difficult aspect of language learning. And Dr. Paul Pimsler pretty much said the same thing. Vocabulary is the most challenging aspect of language learning. It's not that vocabulary is intrinsically hard, it's just that there is a lot of work to be done. There are thousands of words to be learned. So I'm going to repeat this, but according to Dr. Paul Nation, you need at least 3,000 words to be able to understand a movie, and this is the bare minimum, but ideally you have to know about 6,000 words, the 6,000 most common words in that language. And so just as a reminder, those 6,000 words is our goal for learning a language in one year. Learning new words is a challenge, but the bigger challenge is actually keeping up with the words that you previously learned. So if you do the math, you have 6,000 words and you wanna learn those 6,000 words in one year, you're going to have to learn about 17 new words every single day. And actually remember that reviewing the words that you learned on previous days and previous weeks and previous months is going to take up even more time. So most people are not able to keep up with this pace. So what is the solution here? Well, it's fairly simple. Use an SRS. An SRS, or you know, short for spaced repetition system, is a tool that enables you to learn new vocabulary while reviewing old vocabulary. So the result is that you're learning stuff and you're remembering most of it in the long term. Space repetition systems usually present themselves as flashcard apps. Every single flashcard contains a word or a sentence that you're trying to learn. The beauty with spaced repetition systems and those flashcard systems is that they're going to present you with the right words and the right sentences at the right point in time. So the result is that you're learning a bunch of new vocabulary, but you're remembering most of what you have studied in the past. Now, which space repetition system should you use? There are plenty of free ones out there, stuff like Anki, stuff like Memorize, and you know, basically every single, pretty much every single modern language learning app is going to be 
an SRS. I mean, even Duolingo is an SRS. My personal recommendation would be to use Anki because it's free, it's highly customizable, and there are plenty of free resources online on how to use it, and you also have entire decks that is, you know, like uh, packs of free flashcards that are compatible with Anki. So, all right, I've just told you that the solution to vocabulary, which is a huge challenge, is to use a space repetition system. But I've also told you that most language learning apps nowadays are space repetition systems. So why is it that most people using these apps actually fail at learning languages? Well, it's simply a volume and adherence issue. So what I mean by that is that most people using those apps actually don't persevere long enough to actually be able to learn those 6,000 words that I've talked about. In addition to that, they not only do they not persevere, but they also give up pretty quickly. So they lose the little gains that they have made. So just so we can have more uh, precise, a more precise objective here, I just want to remind you that the goal is six thousand words in a year. So that means so that means five hundred words per month which comes down to 17 new words per day, in addition to you know, reviewing the old words that you learned in the past. Now, I'm going to assume that you're probably going to forget uh, some of the words that you, uh, that you review in spite of the efficacy of the space repetition algorithm. I mean, it's normal, you're going to forget some stuff. So I'm going to increase the number of new words that you should learn. So we're taking into account this natural forgetting. So let's say 20 new words per day. So 20 new words a day is a lot more than what the average language learner is, is doing. And as a matter of fact, the average language learner is probably not studying every day, which means that, for example, if you're just studying one day out of two, every single day that you're studying, if your goal is to become fluent in the language and master vocabulary, you're going to need to study 40 new words and in my opinion this is actually not realistic so the solution here is if you don't want to have to learn a bunch of new words every single studying day you really need to make studying your language a daily habit so now that I have established the importance of learning the 20 new words every single day reviewing the, the old words and doing so daily, I feel like I need to talk about something a little bit more taboo. Well, it's not really taboo, but it's by far the number one reason why people actually fail at learning languages. So, you know, most people don't fail at learning languages because they don't study properly. They don't fail at learning languages because their teacher is bad. They fail at learning languages because they give up at some point. Now, if you're watching this video right now, I think it's fair to assume that you have some degree of motivation. Maybe you're really motivated to learn a language. And look, I know that you're motivated. I know that this is really how you feel, but most people who you know give up actually felt just like you in the beginning. And yet, most people give up and most people fail at learning languages. So what I'm getting at here is that this initial motivation is not enough. This is just initial motivation. It's going to fade. I'm speaking from personal experience here. So what is the solution? Well, don't count on motivation. You should engineer your program so that you don't need motivation to actually get to work. As I said earlier, I'm in the process of creating a new tool called Fluent Falcon. This is actually the way I study. And because it's mostly audio based, you don't need a lot of motivation to actually do the studying. You just listen and you just repeat and you do that every single day and it's going to cover everything that you need to actually learn a language. Because to me, the most tedious thing about studying a language is actually having to sit down and you know invest some active time into studying. It. So Fluent Falcon actually allows you to study a language while doing something else like working out, commuting, or doing the dishes and that kind of stuff. So now you have all the knowledge you need to have in order to learn a language in one year. Again, you can implement this advice on your own or if you want, you can check out FluentFalcon.com which is a tool that I have made and that I personally study with. Fluent Falcon actually allows you to learn any language and it's going to cover the three pillars I've talked about, pronunciation, grammar, and vocabulary. Fluent Falcon is actually a way that you can learn those 6,000 most common words and become fluent in any language in one year. 
Again, I'll include a link in the description. I hope this was insightful to you. If you want more content like this, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments.